Tsukuba is one of the race circuits in Japan that's actually located in a relatively city-like atmosphere. It was created in 1966, and although it took a number of years to get underway, it soon became one of the principal time attack routes for many of those legendary JDM cars, such as the Skyline, the Lancer, and the Impreza. Funnily enough though, Tsukuba Race Circuit was actually made and developed before the evolution of Tsukuba City. Tsukuba as a city didn't exist, amazingly, until 1987. So you might be thinking, where on earth has that name come from? Well, it comes from the mountain located in the background. And I tell you something, the drivers are going to have one heck of a mountain to climb in the championship as we go to round four of the Mini Cooper Cup with Coates versus Newsham. It's going to be a wonderful set of races tonight. I'm really looking forward to this one. As always, alongside me in the commentary box and the good man himself, Jordan, is with us. Good evening. How are we all? Yeah, doing very well. It's looking like a going to be a fascinating track. I think the dynamics of the circuit, Jordan, is going to play host to some really interesting results and probably some very difficult racing for the drivers. Yeah, it, it should be uh, should be a good a good race. Uh, obviously, the low power of the cars makes this circuit's nature very tightly tightly paced between the field um, so it'll be interesting to see how all of them go obviously Les currently leading the way in practice but um, a very different pace to the McGann's earlier this season yeah. that's for sure absolutely certain. yeah I was just I was just going to make note of that Jordan um, for those that have been watching Next Gen over the past week or so you'll have seen that we came to Sakuba for round four for the Renault McGann trophy both lobbies and the lap times there in lobby two jordan you might be able to tell me about lobby one of course but the times in lobby two were 55s were the best lap times and you can already see in practice we're doing oh well over well practically 10 seconds slower almost yeah i think lobby one was about 53s possibly edging into the 52s for the mcgans uh, we were edging 54s in the shirokos i think if i'm rightly remember mm. um yeah, it's but that, that's the difference in power. Though. I mean, the, these things have got nigh on n nearly half the power, uh, so that's where it all comes from. But they should they should get better traction with with less power. So uh, switchback moves. I'm I'm hoping to see a plenty for that reason. Yeah, it's going to be key, isn't it? With the with the gears, of course, the drivers making sure they've got that optimum gear linkage. I was going around doing a bit of practice before, and it seems to be there's going to be a couple of drivers going in third for the hairpins, some in second. And I think the brake bias, which is what I've briefly mentioned before, Jordan, is going to actually play quite a big part tonight. Yeah, I'd suggest they're probably going to run a rearward brake bias, make the back end move around a little bit more. Because obviously, naturally, with a front wheel drive car, if it gets a bit sideways, you just point the wheels where you want to go and deck it. So, uh, oversteer, although it will cost you a bit of time in terms of not going forwards and actually slowing down a little bit, probably a lot nicer than understeer, because if you understeer with these cars, you've got to come off the throttle to make the back end move anyway. Uh, at that point, you'd rather be on the throttle than off the throttle. Absolutely. So we've got all 12 drivers in for tonight's race, haven't we, Jordan? Uh, we do, and they are all at least in the pit lane anyway. So we can get qualifying underway. Yeah, a quick, uh, quick look at the standings though. Les is leading the way. Uh, he's on 113 points. Four Fish has 107. Riley Matt has 75. Bruce Lee Harding 72. So quite close between those two. Uh, and D Whitehouse only a further point behind on 71. Stevie Q has 65 with Bumper Cam Bob on 59. Philo has 59 as well, along with Joey Dunlop on 45. Sav 42. Uh, just wait for my phone to do something. Uh, and that's all I've got because my phone's messed up and gone to a different chat. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, there we go then. Uh, so then we've got Traumatic Dave on 39, Ways on 37, Mad Marshall 22. Now I do know Mad Marshall um, can only do one race tonight. Uh, that will. That will have an effect. 
In terms of the teams, uh, the team Coates leading the way, 463 points to 271. Mm. So it's going to be an interesting, an interesting night for the drivers then. Obviously, Jordan, you mentioned about the the championship battle. Seems like it's a quite a good championship fight hotting up for third place uh, between Rally Mats, Snav and D Whitehouse. But then the top two mm, seem Bruce. to be running away with it. <laughs> Sorry, Bruce Lee indeed, rather. Yeah, Les and Fallfish, I mean, to be fair, we, 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 we knew they were going to be quick coming into this. Um, just from the from previous Scirocco seasons, actually, that Scirocco's being front-wheel drive. Um, I think the only person, really, that could that could beat them on their day was uh, F124YS, who's uh, now on mm. PC. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, another another a name thrown back into the into the history books for the, for some of the spectators who are watching tonight. I'm sure they'll recognise F124YS. Based against him myself, he was a very competitive driver. Held him, oh, held him off at Suzuki East for 20, 20 minutes in a Scirocco. That was it. Good, good race. <laughs> was that the highlights of your GT Sport career? <laughs> pretty, well, pretty much, yeah. I mean, at least you got to hold him behind. I never had a chance. <laughs> I, I think I think I finished second in that race, so I was like, "Are you not coming past?" And then I, I think he tried so hard, he then lost third place to uh, to Fallfish. Ever <laughs> funnily enough. Oh crikey! Oh, Stevie Q just run a little bit wide through turn nine, um, but that's going to be, you know, looking at the the. The corners on this circuit, are, you know, turn nine is going to be what I've already seen in, in practice. I, I got here quite early, of course, to set everything up. That's going to be one of the key corners on circuit that I've noticed the drivers are struggling to try and get the car hooked up. It's it's one of those corners that has a couple of lines, and in reality, only one of them works for this car. Uh, and it tends to be a later apex. It's now going to go seventh. Um, yeah, it tends to be quite a later apex, and uh, I think I noticed this in the McGann race, weirdly enough, actually, with Snav got so much drive out of the final corner, he got a mega run through the main straight and just kept doing people into the, into the first first hairpin. So it's, it's a critical corner, really. If you can get it right, uh, it, you can gain a lot of time in a lot of places by it. Mm. But uh, running Matt, only 0.2 away from Les so far. Yeah, it's quite close at, at the moment between the drivers. You can see the, the Made that point zero five five. Mm. <laughs> even closer. There goes Matt into into turn one. And I've got to say, at any point, Jordan, if you watch Rally Matt, his line through turn one is fantastic. The car is absolutely sideways as it comes into turn one. It's fantastic to watch. Yeah, obviously, Rally Matt, an uh, actual rally driver, as his name might suggest. He uh, drives a 1400 Ford car, the last time I think I saw him in the forest. I think he has driven an R5 as well. So uh, he knows how to drive front wheel drive cars at this sort of. I say power, I mean, it's probably about 170 brake he's driven in that Ford car, possibly more. So, yeah, he knows how to drive these sorts of cars, and I'll see if that works for him, that works for him. Oh, I've just watched Mad Marshall go flying off at turn nine. Gone off quite early in the corner. He's actually gone back into the pits now. But the whole field, separated by a second, and Mad Marshall has left. So that's not a good sign. So we're down a driver already. I wonder if uh, whatever he, he can't do race two, four has maybe cropped up a bit earlier. Mm. But um, Bruce, only seven so far, but he's only seven tenths away. It's very close, isn't it, at the moment? The, the midfield fight is going to be just as almost effective as the, the front runners. I mean, you can see at the moment the top four just separated by two tenths at a second, and then the whole Oasis I, sort of I tell you leading the, the next pack. The whole field separated by 1.028 seconds. Mm. That's how close it is. That's 11 drivers covered by just over a second. That's, that's not even an average of 0.1 between each driver. No, it's not. It's very close. What I would say, though, is a second the lap round here is... If you try and extrapolate that, of course, and make it a little bit bigger in terms of putting it onto a, a normal circuit, you'd probably say it's about two and a half, wouldn't you, realistically? 
it is, but the problem is, is that we're out around this circuit. Obviously, a second in qualifying is is mental. As soon as you get to the race, you've got to deal with the slipstream. Obviously, you've got the middle sector, which isn't so key, but uh, that fine the final sector and going into turn one that that is, is crucial. That having that slipstream because you can pressurize someone to make a mistake into turn nine. Yeah, absolutely. And and there, are, there I think Jordan, you'd agree with me on this that there's three sort of key points on this circuit. Don't know who you're riding on board with at the moment or sort of following, but turn one, turn eight, and turn nine really are the key key moments in yeah. this track. Well, I'm on board with Les. Let's go for a lap with him. So up to turn one. Oh, so it's slightly uphill, so you can break a little bit later than uh, than you think. Late apex for Les, making sure he's got the best line coming out so he can stay on the throttle. Then we go through two and three, which is just a flat left, a flat right. But as soon as you've gone through three, you're hitting the brakes. Les taking, again, quite a deep line to square the corner up to have a later apex. Turn five, should be flat right in this car. Oh, slight confidence lift to make the back end move around. And then it's a flat through six. Seven is flat, and then you're immediately hard on the brakes for turn eight. And you can see again, Les making sure he has that later apex to get the power on earlier. So basically squaring the corner up so we can put the power down earlier and effectively harder. Turn nine, as we said, a crucial corner this to get right. You can gain a lot of time, you can lose a lot of time. Les, you just let it coast in in fourth. Allow the front end to bite and then bring the throttle back in. Let it run a little bit on the curb on the outside. Not the fastest lap for Laird, but not far away. Um, and I must note as well, you can use a bit more of the uh, of the green on the outside of turn nine there, should you need it. You can run all four wheels over the, the Astro turf when I was out on practice before. So the drivers are really going to get penalised uh, for using a bit more of the exit curb. You can tell with this track, for those that are watching, there's not really much in terms of safety room. It's effectively curb, grass, wall. <laughs> Pretty much depending on whereabouts you are on circuit. Pro proper old school circuit. Hmm. Which, which I like. You, you make a mistake, you get punished for it. Hmm. A whole host of lap times just coming through there. Bruce, Stevie and Forfitch all setting laps. Yeah, that's from Very quick, Dave and D White House again. So D White House up to sixth. Warehouse in stick. Just I think Dave's got within us. So everyone now within a second of one another. Uh, Joey Dunlop now currently ho holding 11th, but 0.9942 away. So less than a second now covers the field. And most of the drivers will have either a lap or two laps left now, depending on where they are on circuit. And I think Jordan, you know, we're coming back to the point we mentioned before as we go on to these final laps now. It doesn't matter so much about qualifying. I know the grid positions are important, but there could be huge fights through this pack that could keep everyone quite bunched together. They can do, but what they have to be careful of is to make sure they don't fight to the point that they actually start losing time, because especially if you're second and third... So now just getting out of the way there of uh, Philo. Um, you know, saying that, Philo abandons that current lap, so she's not happy with it. Um, yeah, you've got to be careful. If you're second and third, okay, you can have a little bit of a fight, but in reality, if you fight too much, you're going to allow the leader to get away. And the problem is, around this circuit, you break the two-second barrier very hard to get that back. Mm. Just, just a point to note as well, the top seven covered by three tenths. And then there's just little gaps appearing in a couple of other places, but it's so close, it's going to be phenomenal to watch everyone this close and this tight in the field, all fighting together. I'm trying to pick who's going to be the first to cross the line and finish a qualifying session. I think it could well be Stevie Q, I think. Could be the first person to cross that line. Looks like four fish packed up. Oh, I'm going to be correct on my prediction, I think. So here comes Stevie Q. He's going to complete qualifying. He doesn't go any faster. Full fish puts it second on the grid. Bruce Lee Harden didn't go any quicker on that lap, so he's seen the checkered flag now. Dramatic Dave and D Whitehouse, the two Daves coming towards the line. Try they do them. not improve. So, Dramatic Dave has the wooden spoon as it stands and won't be able to get away from that. 
Waste now coming around the final corner in fifth place. Can he improve? No, he can't. Snav on his final attempt. He can't improve either. Only one other driver left on a lap, which is Rally Matt. I think Joey Dunlop, uh, sorry, is also on a lap. So let's mm. see how Rally Matt does as he comes towards turn nine. Matt's uh, not very quick there. He's not. Yeah, he's giving up. So Joey Dunlop, what can he do from 10th? Can he go any quicker? Doesn't look like it. No. I wonder if Matt's going to come around and just do a quick practice start. No, nope, he's just going to drive across the line. So, our pre both of our predictions... Maybe Rally Matt's going to be the one to confuse us tonight, Jordan. <laughs> well, he's only 0 0.055 from Les. Four fish, a hundredth between them. <laughs> Top four separated by a tenth. That's insanely close racing. So, Les is your pole, man. We're going to get underway here for race number one. 20 minutes of racing, no tyre or fuel wear, so they're absolutely flat to the mats, as you could say, all race long. We had Bruce down in, down in eighth, but really not that far away. As the lights come on, the revs rise, and we have the three red lights and we are green as a cooper for the first time tonight who's got the best getaway and it's looking like les has got a good getaway but full fish sticking with him and potentially keeping the door open for turn one i see the pole around the outside i think les just about going to keep the momentum to keep the lead there as we all go through it looks like we're through cleanly jack all clean through. D. Whitehouse had a really good launch off the line, but just didn't get the momentum. You can see Stevie Q now have to defend going into turn four from Bruce Lee. Stevie Q trying to just hang it on the inside. Bruce Lee's still there, and they're actually side by side coming towards turn five. Just picking them now. Through five they go, and I think Bruce is going to... should make that move stick now. Gives a lot more room than he needs to, but he's still there for turn eight, but Stevie Q cuts across him. Yeah, so... Oh, and Snav down the inside of Bruce Lee Harding as well. well I don't think that's quite going to stick. That tighter line coming at the hairpin, if you tight in, tight out, doesn't normally work and hasn't done once again. Waste well, up to fourth as well. We haven't seen it, but he's got past Philo. Just looking in the chat just before we started, Waste saying he wish he could have had more practice. Well, his opening lap hasn't been too bad. No, but Philo and Waze have to start working together, but they're not. They're going to go side by side into turn one. They're both teammates. They're both on the Newsham camp. Philo's got the momentum as they come through the fast, well, rather flat two and three. Sure enough, Philo. Waze, need, Waze needs to play this smart here. He could get a much better result than fourth if he works together with his teammates. Still fighting exceptionally hard through five. I think Philo needed to get past, though. I, I think looking at the lap times, Jordan, and qualifying as the front three just start to get away now. That Philo just had a couple of attempts. That might be important when you're trying to just latch onto the back of someone and just keep your rhythm up. Definitely. All 11 cars in one frame there, which is fantastic <laughs> to see, even though it's only lap two. But yeah, we actually say Waze now nearly seven tenths away from Philo, so crucial move for Fido that hopefully he won't uh, he won't get done by what is effectively the slipstream train of the top three because that's a critical thing that those those three coach drivers have at the front is that slipstream over Philo. Meanwhile Dear Snav indeed. Snav has ended up at the back of the pack. I'm just gonna see if I can find what see what happens he's already at the back when the replay starts so yeah i was gonna i was gonna say i was just gonna jump in on that it's been some time i don't know what's happened to him on lap two he certainly wasn't last when we came round to turn one so could be just a little bit of a, a deep mm. deep running into a hairpin stevie q on the back of his teammate in d white house seven but not really attacking maybe trying to use d white house to get up to the back of ways here does have the slipstream though, does Stevie Q? You can see how close they are. I wouldn't say turn nine is really an overtaking spot though. No. I mean, I couldn't I, have I, got any closer to him though. To be fair, I have seen moves being done through turn nine, 
They're not the easiest to pull off. You've got to have absolute faith in the driver next to you, whether you're attacking or defending. Jerry Dunlop on just defending oh, just from his that. good friend from Traumatic Dave there. The front three, line astern. Philo setting similar lap times to the front three as Fourfish looks to have a little look at the inside of Les. Oh, Les has gone off. He's we'll got go his back line up. all wrong. We'll go back have a look at that in a minute. I think he might just get away with that, Jordan, because he went exceptionally wide through four. Oh. Matt's on the inside. Fourfish almost went for the, to almost dummy Les and switch it through the hairpin. But Rally Matt was already there. And here comes Philo for good measure. Philo back into this top fight. And they're two abreast coming into turn nine. Is Philo who can't go around the outside, can he? The answer's he, no. He's, well, he's sitting there in the slipstream. That's the advantage that Philo's got. I'm on board with him at the moment. Les has got a good run, as has Philo, who's provisionally second. Full fish on the inside, though. It's going to be hard to try and hang this around the outside. It'd be impressive if he can. He's still there. Fourfish just trying to squeeze the door on him. Obviously, Philo fighting back. He's on the inside now as they come through three. On the brakes for four. And Fourfish just a little bit sideways as he went into the corner. That's cost him. Here comes Matt. Yeah, obviously, around the outside, you can carry that momentum around the outside in these cars. They're still side by side through turn five into six. Fullfish not giving this one up, but he has to slot in behind now as they go into seven. Looks to Matt's, the inside. Yeah. Matt but, was just uh, looking to try and get a move there, but nothing nothing doing from him. And it's, it's brought the field back together, Jordan. Like we were saying before, in, in qualifying, that's just all it takes. is a quick battle and everyone's back in the train. Yeah, just, just watching Les then. Out of turn four, he's just rev got the wheel spin and he's just understood clean off the circuit. And that's what's kicked all of this off. But Fino, good stuff by him. He's not given that one up and he's now looking at potentially taking the lead for mm. Team Newsham. This is going to need some help from his fellow Newsham drivers. Waste was there, but he's lost half a second on. Last lap, he was six tenths behind when it all kicked off. But in other as you can news, tell I was going to say, in other news, snap up, up to ninth. I'm, my replay's probably missed it, which it has. But it uh, looks like a good little fight at the back here between this this three, although snap starting to break away a little bit. Uh, and also Stevie Q ahead of D Whitehouse now, who's got Bruce Lee and Harding for company. And it's fair to say these two are starting to know each other quite well in this series. Back at the front, Philo looking for a move up the inside. Les covering the the move. Then he goes back and takes his line. They both made at the same time. It was a bit of an awkward timing for the pair. But no contact, which is the main thing at the moment. Fourfish looking to try and get a good line, which he has done. Everyone using the Astro turf for turn number nine there. Fourfish just filling the mirrors. You'll, you'll notice Philo probably using a bit more Astro than the rest tonight because he is on a controller, which means that he does tend to understeer a bit more. But the advantage is that the uh, the front end does bite a lot quicker, which means this uh, here definitely uh, a pro for the controller users. Waste having to defend heavily from Stevie Q going into turn four. Stevie Q certainly found some pace in the last couple of laps. He's into the one minute fours. He's not too far away from the lap times at the front quartet set. And Les defended on the inside into turn eight though. I've just spotted that in the foreground, so back at the front, and it looks like Fullfish looking to get back underneath, but he's not going to have the slipstream. So Philo able to cover that one off, and Rally Matt not, looks like he's more interested in trying to take that place away from Fullfish going through turn 9. And as we say that, Philo down the inside through turn 9, we're going to replay mark of this, because that is a fantastic bit of driving between the pair. No contact. Possibly the uh, trait is like trading a paint, but... Philo, that's a great move if you can keep this one through turn one. He can't, though. That's the problem because Les has managed to keep a mini size gap on the inside as he comes through two into three. Just got the brake later. In fact, Philo just backs out of it and keeps himself in second place. So he's going to be a little bit annoyed at that. Let's see that replay, Jord. Yeah, I'm going to go on board with Philo as we go in. So coming down towards turn nine. Les opens the door, and Philo just says, oh, thank you very much, almost. 
Absolutely. Just a, a touch, a touch of contact going in. But uh, I wouldn't have said it was massively malicious. Um, just, Mean, just. Meanwhile. <laughs> Sorry, Jordan, to interrupt no. you. Stevie Q on the inside of Waze. He got a really good run out of turn eight. He's on the inside. Waze still there on the outside. Ooh, bit of door banging between the two. Waze just fighting himself to get back on circuit, which he's entitled to do. He was squeezed out a little bit. Stevie still keeping the mini in the way, and he's up to fifth. Here comes D Whitehouse now on the inside. <laughs> going to be tri tricky to try and go around the outside of turn four, but he's going to try it, no doubt. Yeah, a lot of will spin that for ways coming out of turn one. Just just enabled the Club 100 driver of D White House to try and get through. And D White House looking almost for a run into five. Ways is starting to struggle with the front end of that car out of the corners. Mm. Which again, understandable himself also being on a controller. But uh, he's, he's struggling a lot more than he usually does. As he, oh, that's not going to work. Got that. I have to say, I was on board for Waze with that. He's done quite well there, Jordan, to not hit to uh, to not hit Stevie Q because he did get it wrong on the brakes. He pulled that handbrake immediately. I saw his indicator flash up. I have to say that's good evasive driving. He's lost a lot of time, but he deserves a bit of credit for once for that. We're going to see it from the angle you saw that, Jack. We're on board with Ways coming through six and seven. Just absolutely missed his braking point, and yeah, you say on the handbrake. Good piece of avoiding action. Bruce Lee up to sixth as we go through that. Just got past D Whitehouse. D Whitehouse was looking for a potential opportunity on Stevie Q. Not happened. And Bruce up to sixth now. So, despite a inauspicious start from the obviously Jensen Racing <laughs> livery driver, he's got himself up to sixth, and his lap times have been pretty solid in the last few laps. Um, I don't know if we can pick it up on the replays, but four fish. Just got past into second. How, how have we caught it? The answer is no. So whilst we've been focusing on a few battles at the back, the two championship leaders return to battle each other. Obviously, good friends these two outside of it. You can see how close four fish underneath going through turn nine. The rear wing of Les was right under his visor. Still half this race to go though, and. Anyone's race between these front four. I think Rally Matt's probably going to be a bit frustrated in fourth because he's kind of in the worst position in the train to try and make well, any progress. He is, but he has set fastest lap, so he's got a bonus point right now. He does have that fastest lap bonus point, which is good for him. He does have the triple train in front of him, which is going to be dubbed that now. And he's the first driver, I think, into the one minute freeze. Yeah, all night, I think. All night. That's really impressive. Stevie Q, oh, she's coming under a bit of pressure from Bruce, but D Whitehouse now starting to to come back against the the Newsham driver. Although Stevie Q very wide through turn eight, which is going to gift Bruce a slightly better slipstream into nine, and now we're going to have a, a bit of a triple battle here for the final spot in the top five. Absolutely. Lots of battles going on everywhere at the moment. Really difficult to say who's closest battle on this track at the moment is actually Fourth Fish and Les. They're separated by just two tenths. Fourth Fish looks like he, he wants this race win. And we said earlier, didn't we, Jordan, that top two in a championship are covered by, was, was it four points, I believe? Uh, four or five points, yeah. It's very close between them. So this will, Fourth Fish will be looking, of course, to try and get momentum back in his championship personal tussle between himself and Les. You can see how close they are on circuit at the moment. And in fact, they've I wouldn't say they've worked together, but they've put a bit of a gap on Philo and Matt behind. They, they oh, have. Only half a second, which is still quite a lot around this circuit. We have to remember that. They have, but I think Philo, maybe now, because let's face it, Four Fish and Les aren't going to work together for long. They've only got mm. seven minutes left, and they still have to think about their own championships as well as their teams. So, how long does Four Fish wait? Because Philo now right on his bumper, coming through nine. Philo getting turn nine, absolutely perfect tonight. Seems to be getting the runs on uh, on everyone. The advantage of the the controller user there in terms of Philo just getting that that performance, like you say, Jordan, out of turn nine. And again, you alluded to it in the McGans as he goes later on the brakes into four. 
like you said before, Jordan, the different lines, the different bite on the throttle that the controller users can get out of there, it sometimes mitigates the the difficulties that the wheeled users use. Yeah, I mean, on a wheel through turn nine, if if you're not spot on, it's it's quite difficult to make it work. But once again, Philo loses that the time he gains, he almost loses his through sector two at the moment. So if you can mitigate that, he'll uh, he'll will be within a great shout, I think. I have to say, Joey Dunlop and Traumatic Dave still having a wonderful battle for the battle in the wooden spoon. Uh, both of them trading positions every couple of laps or so. It's really good driving between these two. They obviously know each other well, of course, outside of the race. You can see how close Traumatic Dave is to the rear bumper. Looking for These... for a bit of a switch here, isn't he? Well, that, that looked closer than it actually was from my camera angle. He's just pushing Joey up towards turn one. Oh! Ooh. Might have been a little nudge and a squid. Mm, maybe not. It's... Uh... Traumatic Dave, not normally the type of driver to take advantage, so maybe it was the angle and Joey I'm just just, got just the on board with on. Traumatic Dave. Yeah, Joey's just outbraked himself. And I think he's just nipped the bar to to make the front end go in. So perfect. Action perfectly at fine. the front, action at the front. Sorry, Jordan, so interrupt you. Four fish has got the lead. Going in towards turn eight. And here comes Philo. on the inside for nine. I've replay marked it so we can go back and watch Fourfish take the lead. There goes Philo. So Les, in the space of what's, what appears to be two corners, goes from first to third. <laughs> Philo just about closing the door in time. And this will give Fourfish the championship lead as it stands with a mm. car between himself and Les. Let's Good. see that replay, Jord. Yeah, just showing it now. Fourfish, he always went in a little bit deep, but because Les went in deep as well, he's managed to make the move work, and in such a manner that Les has had to keep it wide. That allowed Philo through. I mean, probably not what Fourfish was looking for was to have Philo on his tail, because, as we know, Philo, very strong out of this turn eight and turn nine. Matt, a bit wide in the background, so that's going to lose him a fair chunk of time there. It is indeed, and I think it's unfortunate for Matt because, like I said before, Jordan, he's he's just been in the wrong place, really, being in fourth, and this train is that there's... Once the other cars start getting runs of momentum, this circuit's not wide enough, realistically, for three wide, so... And, it's just got uh, a... As we speak, Philo. yeah, Philo had a little look, but realised he didn't have enough of a run to really make it work, because the problem is you go on that title line, you compromise your exit. It's a, it's a it's a really tricky circuit in that respect, Sakuba. You have to try and get that later apex. But if you if you can't, it's a, it can be a little bit more of a struggle. As Les looks to go down the inside, that'd have been a brave move and probably a bit of contact. So good, good stuff to not get in that position in the end. Absolutely, a really good, the really good fight between the drivers. You know, the top four have given us a lot of entertainment so far. Three and minutes to go. The battle for fifth is still on as well. We must not forget. Stevie Q mm. ran a little bit wide out of five, which has brought Bruce Lee Harding into play. Out of eight, they come. Number sixty-nine car, looking well, to make his move. One thing to note about this, and this is something I've noticed between the drivers, I'm just watching is. I thought he might have had an opportunity there, but not quite just yet. But one thing I noted with Bruce is that he's taking second gear coming through turn eight, as opposed to Stevie, who's in third. And that change in gear seems to be costing Bruce a bit of time in terms of momentum. Might be better for his style, but something to pick up on. Yeah, I know Bruce has been struggling this season in trying to work out when when to get the gears to go up because obviously he struggled at Lago coming out of turn two. Um, so it's it's that learning curve you have with these cars because in Gran Turismo there tends to be just a specific speed that uh, the car likes to change up and Les has fallen off the back of the battle for the, for the lead and with a minute 54 remaining, so it's about two laps, um, it looks like it's becoming a two-horse race a little bit, as Philo will be looking for his trademark switchback through turn nine. He's trying to hang it around the outside, which is 
fair play to them. They're going to have two laps left. Velo trying to cut back and then switch back every single way that he can towards turn one. He's forcing Fourfish to go tight though, and it's it's working. It is absolutely working because he's right on his bumper. And again, but this is what Filo needs to do because this now mitigates the the time loss he has through that middle sector because of the of the difference of controls. I have to say that was a great move. Sorry, Jordan, but Waste pulled a brilliant move around the outside of turn one on Snab. That was a fantastic overtake. Not seen any lag. Not seen any lag from him tonight. It was really good to see. Yeah, Bruce, just about just giving him a mini size gap to uh, to complete the move, but yeah, spot on from Waze. So Fourfish still leads the way as they go on to this final half a second now. as well. So has I'm just wondering has Philo made a mistake? I think he just didn't get a good run coming out of turn eight there. Just looking between the the brake bias of the drivers. Philo, this is something to note, Jordan. Running absolutely neutral as we come towards turn four. Yeah, you tend to actually on the control. You do tend to not really change the brake bias too much because on a controller you tend to brake in a, in a dead straight line um, to not make the back end twitch so much. Um, so you're very much hitting it a straight line turn and go. So not really any need to, to change the brake bias in that respect. Whereas like four fish, oh, a bit of contact, a little bit of a rub. Bit of a rub, but who's got the best run on the exit? That's the problem, because Fourfish, he has got a slight bit of a run, but he's going to have to go round the outside of turn nine. Philo's not going to give that one up easy. And Philo sweeps into the lead in the final corner, so it's going to be, provided he can hold it onto the line. TNR Philo takes the victory, followed by Fourfish, Les, Rally, Matt. What a race that was, Jordan. S Stevie Q comes home for fifth, Bruce Lee Harding in sixth, DY House seventh, Ways will fend off Snav. He's still got to get rid of that penalty. He does get rid of the penalty just in time for eighth place. Snav in ninth. Traumatic Dave will beat his buddy in tenth. Joey Dunlop finishes 11th at the back of the pack for the first race. But Velo, right at the cusp, nicks the win. Uh, yeah, what a race. He, there was just enough of a gap for him to look at turn eight. And Fourfish just couldn't shut the door quick enough, and that was it. So from fourth to first for Mr. Philo. What a what a drive! What a great performance in the the races there on that one. So we're gonna have a little break for a few minutes, and then we'll we'll obviously get ready for the top. Well, rather the full reverse. Red. Yeah. Good battle. I mean, to be fair, 20 minutes of racing, the field separated by just 22.8 seconds in the end. Um, so that is incredible. I mean, Traumatic Dave just commenting on the screen saying he can't believe how slow he is. I wouldn't say that, mate. Around here, being less than a second is a, is a mighty achievement. I mean, obviously, he's, he's just over a second in in this case for in terms of... Uh, actually, how many laps did we do? Twenty Was it 21 laps, Jack? 20, uh, 21 laps, 21. as far as I, I noted. So ju just over a second slower per lap for Traumatic David. And considering he was battling with Joey Dunlop for the majority of those 21 laps, that's a good effort. And he didn't have the slipstream. Let's not forget, like, the, other, the front four did have that slipstream whilst they were fighting quite hard. You know, that wasn't too bad. Obviously, Wace has just put a comment into the, the GC Sport chat, <laughs> chat confirming what I said before that, you know, he had to use the handbrake. And that was a good piece of driving. He's redeemed himself a little bit as Wace <laughs> in my book with that move. Um, I have to say, I'm just going to just quickly comment into the um, chat box, of course, just so the drivers know qualifying to start in five minutes. Qualifying or the race? Sorry, race starting in five minutes, my bad. I mean, they could do qualifying again, and it's fine. <laughs> um, but one one big thing to note here, Jack, the bonus point, the fastest lap, goes the way of Rally Matt. 
It does. It does indeed. And like I said, like I said at the time, Jordan, I think it was that triple slipstream that he got from the drivers in front of him is gonna would have had a massive effect. You know, he, he was a little bit further back on that lap when he started it, so he didn't have to worry about anyone else's braking zone. But that's still very competitive. But the, the interesting thing, it tell, actually tells you what lap, he, he set it on lap 10, and there was a little lull in about lap 15, where the top four had just kind of like stopped battling just a minute as they kind of separated. So it's, it's interesting that, that that lap stood for an, the, the second half of the race, effectively. In terms of that, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be frustrating for Four Fish and Les that because both of them know that bonus points could be the the, the factor that separates them at the, come the end of the season. Mm. Uh, Absolutely, it's going to be very important come the end of the season. And I was just having a, a quick check back through trying to see where the championship standings are, and I haven't got them, so that's that's really good. Nice one, Jack, for that segue. It didn't work. I'll uh, I'll send them over to you, mate. Thanks, friend. There you Let's go. A couple of... Thanks, friend. So you can see, in terms of the, well, you can't quite see just yet, but in terms of the championship standings, you know, Lairs and Fourfish were separated by six points going into the event, and now it's going to be three. Stevie Q just uh, saying two gonna minutes. Be, it's actually going to be four. Ah, yes, of course. Because Les took pole position. I'm glad you're there to correct me, Jord. <laughs> <laughs> the same for me. And uh, we we complimented each other quite well. but uh, I mean, I think out of the top three, all 20 minutes 32. It's just it's amazing. Total. It was a fantastic race. It was really good driving. From everyone in the field, there was no contact. It was really clean you know door handle to door handle bit of paint chipping whatever but that's what you want to see isn't it really you know that's the that's the spirit of coats that's versus new that tor close contact touring, racing it's touring car esque yeah. isn't it that's the thing uh, but another in interesting thing to note actually is um, Waze's penalty at the end almost cost him he just crossed the line just point zero uh, five seven ahead of Snav so that I, nearly cost I, him the yeah. eighth place. I saw that when he when because obviously you were saying that Jordan when he cleared it, and I looked at it and I thought I thought he'd already cleared it before by the time he came to came round turn nine, but he seemed to just stop again. Yeah, the problem is, is that he he was clearing it through turn nine, and mm. obviously if you're clearing it through the corner. Well, the people behind you are already accelerating out, so that momentum, and and it's the key thing with the front wheel drives of this sort of power, momentum is king, which is why you tend to see moves around the outside work, because of the momentum round that you can have around the outside uh, on mm. certain corners. Um, but yeah, you lose the momentum, it's very hard to gain it back up again to, to defend that position. Yeah, definitely. Just checking the lobby settings are all... Okay, just checking that the grid all those reverse grid based on previous race results, which is fine, which we'll see the two friends on the front row. Yep, yeah, where is there's traumatic Dave? Uh I don't think everyone's entered yet, so obviously we'll have to wait for them to mm. to all enter. Um So yeah, there's traumatic Dave, he's just going around doing a few laps, obviously not a problem, go around just do a little bit of extra practice before race two. And uh, I'd almost advise a few, I'd advise him to do uh, probably a couple of practice starts while I, when he gets back to the front of the uh, of the circuit, just to get a feel what it's like from, from that second place on the grid. Yeah, absolutely, it's going to be really, really important. We're still waiting for the, the race to start, I say the race to start obviously it's in the control of me and Jordan <laughs> in that sense but we said to give everyone a little bit of time but it's just Les once Les has entered I think we'll be ready to to start and Jordan well, I, I don't want to put you on the spot but if you had to pick a potential race winner a potential race winner from here reverse grid I tell you what D Whitehouse has got a great chance mm. in my opinion he he's he won round here in the Shirocco's Good. Um, 
And I'm, I've got a feeling he was part of the reverse... Was he part of the reverse grid? I can't remember, actually. No, I don't think he was. But anyway, um, he, he won around in the Strockers, and I think from his position, he's probably got the best chance. Although, I say that, Waze, if Waze can just carve through those three cars ahead of him, if, if he can get, get in front and clear, and just have a bit of free time with Traumatic Day, Joe Dunlop and Snav behind him, he's also, if he can get away, he could also be a winner. So, a couple of options, really. But I was going to say, Jack, it's a bit weird for this circuit, the fact that pole position is on the outside of the circuit. It is, and I, and I think that's just because of the, the nature of the circuit as well. If you think it's, it's, you know, it's a clockwise run circuit, but Turn 1, I believe the, the reason why it was set up like that was for the time attack cars when they did stand and starts, was to give them the best opportunity um, from a stand and start to go into Turn 1. So... I think I think that's I'm fairly certain that's the reason why it was it was created mm. in that way rather than putting it on the inside. But so I, that I they could open up the steering a bit more. I, I guess it's also on that racing on that racing line. Now in, in theory, being on the racing line that would be a slightly more rubbered side of the circuit, mm. which would mean they get more traction off the uh, off the grid. This is GT Sport, which means there technically is no rubbering in. So um it should that's why people in second place, in theory, in real life, would probably get a worse start being on the dirty side of the grid, but that's not, not the case in GT Sport. Mm, they would do, that sucks, absolutely. So, shall we get things underway, Jordan? Everyone's in. Is everyone in? Everyone running around? That's, uh, yep, yeah, all 11 are in. So, uh, it's now just going to circuit. I've given, them, I've given them their fair warning. Let's, uh, let's get race two underway, then. All right then, so race starts. I'll jump out so that I can, or well, rather jump in so that I can see what's going on, everyone. Getting their laps in. Philo and D Whitehouse just in the pits, but that's not to worry. So here we go then into race number two of the night at round four of Sakuba, technically race eight of the series now, if you consider it. We've got on the right hand side, you can see the blue livery of Joey Dunlop as opposed to the darker blue and black left hand side with traumatic dave who's got that blue and black livery there snav on the second row with waste it's going to be fantastic and fascinating to see how the drivers get on 20 minutes on the right hand side here come the numbers and the race is live from Sakuba Circuit. It's a good launch from Joey Dunlop. Look for Snav in the middle. He looks like he's got a really good start. He's already alongside and past. Traumatic Dave, who's gone backwards. Waste up to third. There's D Whitehouse looking for a move, potentially going into turn number one. But it's Joey Dunlop who leads the way. Snav second. Waste third. D Whitehouse fourth. Bruce Lee fifth. There's Traumatic Dave. He's fallen to sixth. That's how bad his start was. Stevie Q already just in behind him and you can see it's two by two behind them the top four already looking to make moves as les goes off to seven for turn four but what a start for joey dunlop yeah true good start from joey he's just got off the line got on with it uh i i'm gonna I've set a replay for the start i want to go on board with traumatic dave because i have that funny feeling he had no traction control on that start which is why he didn't get away uh, fighting at the back between Rally Matt, Stevie Q, Philo, Fourfish, where Les up to seventh at the moment. He's now side by Dave side with Bruce. Yeah, I was going to say, Traumatic Dave managed to make his way back up. Uh, Waze on the back of Snav. So I, I think if Waze can clear Snav here, get up to the back of Joey Dunlop, he's got a good chance of, of running away a little bit. Um, because Les being held up by Bruce defending around the circuit, and they're going to be three wide if they're not careful with D Whitehouse on the inside. And there was a little bit of contact between D. Whitehouse. He's got past. Traumatic Dave. Bruce Lee's now to fifth as a result. Rally Matt's up to seventh. Les has been forced out of all that. He's down to eighth now. Philo at fourth. This is a little bit further back than what he would have imagined him to have been. As there's all chaos going, coming out of turn four. As you see, that weight's all over the back of Snav coming through turn five into six. He the knows how important this is, doesn't he? He knows he needs to get past Snav well, as soon as he can. Especially with D Whitehouse now released behind him. But remember, he's still got to do it in a safe manner. He's he's going to be desperate, but he's got to make sure he gets does the job cleanly. And has he got a bit of a run coming up towards turn nine? He's poking yeah, he's his got nose. Snav's going to try and go side by side with him, but Waste has got the line. 
Nice throttle control from Waste not to run into the side of Snav, and sure enough, he's through and up into second. D Whitehouse still has the brick wall that is Snav to try and get past just yet. And that's oh, Joey Dutton, that's so contact. That's Stevie Q, and I think Rally Matt. Looks like there was contact, but it also looks like there's a little bit of lag from Rally Matt, so could just be a little bit of lag occurring there. I think it might be. I saw Rally Matt lagging a, a little bit earlier on in race one. Hope that's not going to affect him too much, but he's been shuffled down to 11th as a result. Les up to sixth on the back of Bruce Lee Hardin now. So, despite getting shuffled back to eighth, there's been so much action. He's now back into the, the mix of it again as Philo looks to go up the inside of Traumatic Dave and he's through. Yeah, in the background there you can see it's DVQ also looking, but I've gone to the front because Waze, now on the tail of D of Joey, and D Whitehouse is alongside Snav coming up towards turn 9. Not a lot this of Snav is going to do about that. This is an important move, really good clean race, and Snav taking twice now going around the outside line. Here comes Waze trying to go around the outside too at turn 1. He did this before in, the, in race 1 on Snav. Can he do it again? He's going to go around the outside. And I'll tell you what, Jordan, he's hanging it in there. Oh, he's got a great run through there. He's going to be for the inside for turn four. That is ways into the lead. Now, all he's got to do is... Oh, Joey Dunlop, a big lunge. That... Mm. That's... that's Waze won't be happy with that, but he's got enough of a run to go f back through again at turn five. Sure enough, he just puts himself right back in position. Joey's he'll got... Do, to, mm. I was going to say, Joey's got to be careful with these lunges. He's... There's been a few noted this season uh, he's got away with. And, and again. He's got to again. And Snav's hit D Whitehouse in the meantime. Wace isn't happy. You can tell that already. He's Joey. really not happy, is Wace. And you can understand why, Jordan. Yeah, that th those lunges very far back. And in reality, not really an overtaker. And I think Wace has paused the game. He's not happy. And you know something, that's that's a shame, because realistically, Jordan, he should have just kept going. He should have just kept going. I know he's, he's angry, and I can down. understand that. Got his he head down, though, and this has allowed D. Whitehouse into the lead. And there goes Snav, he's alongside Joey as well. Snav that's trying to get back at the inside. That's cost ways a potential win, I'm afraid, with just not it getting has. his head down. As annoying as it is, I mean, we've all been there, but Dean Whitehouse ahead of Joey Dunlop, and uh, he would have seen Joey make those dives, so he's going to be looking in his mirrors a lot here, which is not what you want to do around Sakuba. Just on board of Joey, he's gone late into the corner. I think that's one thing to note about Joey, is that he is a late breaker, and I think his lines are a little bit different. I, was, I noticed it in practice, is maybe the way he just drives his style, he's just a bit more aggressive on the brakes. But he has caused a few bit of grief as... Philo's had a fantastic run, it's up to fourth trying to go around the outside of Snav. Yeah, Snav, he's going to be, I think he'll play this smart with Philo. Oh, Philo, just a little bit of rub, and yep, Snav giving him a rub back onto the circuit. That's Bruce Lee trying to get involved in the action as well. And Les has gone around the outside. Dean Whitehouse has gone on the grass coming out of turn one. Just, a few cars have gone, oh, Les has hit the back side of Bruce Lee, not sure what's happened there, a couple of drivers going wide. And there's actually a split in the field. Oh, and Joey's gone down the inside. More contact on the rear quarters. Joey into the lead, but I don't think DYS is going to be happy with that. And Philo in third at the moment. Snav doing wonders for Bruce at the moment, holding up, holding off Les. DYS back down the inside. Back into the lead, so... Uh, I'd say Joey needs to try and take this opportunity to make, make just, obviously his style was very late on the brakes, late on the turn in, but maybe just learn a little bit from D.Y. House, because D.Y. House is not a bad driver, and Snav, going back down the inside of Philo, well, I say actually Philo can try and go around the outside of Joey Dunlop. How far are you? Did Philo go to try and stick on the car, thought he was going to spear into the barrier. Here comes Joey, here comes everyone else, just five minutes, Snav. Jordan. All Snav down the, the inside, corner. the big winner for Snav there, up into second. Here comes Philo for good measure on Joey Dunlop. What an absolute train of cars this is, Snav. Holding his own, it has to be said. Philo back into third. He's got Les looking to the inside through turn five. He's alongside him. Waze is up into the... sixth past Bruce Lee Harding. 
in the meantime. Don't rule anyone out of this race just yet, ladies and gentlemen. This has been absolutely spectacular. Well, to be fair, we know this is one of Snout's favourite circuits from the McGann's Lobby 2. Mm. And uh, you'll definitely remember that one, Jack, because you commentated on it. Indeed. A stellar drive in the back of the pack to, to the front, and this time he started at the front, and he's definitely holding his own, but is he possibly reducing his chance of keeping up with D. Whitehouse by fighting with Philo? I think for Snav he's going to be looking for a podium, George. I don't think he's... Oh, I say that. Here comes he's just been swamped by Philo, and now Les on the inside. Les deep on the brakes. Snav with the switch back. He loves that move through there. Snav keeping a third place for now. And Meanwhile, <laughs> everyone <laughs> all, else is fifth. All 11 cars covered by just 4.1 seconds. Oh, and Joey's got that all wrong. It's compromised him. Here comes Wace. Wace, obviously, no love lost between these two as they come through turn five. Kept it clean before. They're going to have to try and do that Ooh, again. Bit of Wace contact. has been forced so far wide. That allows Bruce through, and here comes Four Fish. Absolutely chaos. Seven, we've got seven cars for what I believe is fifth. Yeah, and there's only and there's eight temps between them all. <laughs> that is the gap between them. So, Joey holding up a train at the moment. I thought Wade well, was going to run too wide. It seems to be in these huge pack fights, it, the wider line running onto the AstroTurf seems to actually be working. The drivers, but Bruce Lee, Stevie Q, everyone trying to look for a move up the inside. Joey Dunlop, it's uh, not nice to say it, but he is the the cork in the bottle right now. As Bruce now gets through through turn one, that'll be a critical move for him. And, and oh. For, oh, Joey's gone into the back of him. He's been pushed wide. So Luckily, of... no positions lost, so they can carry on racing. Wace must equally be annoyed because he's seen a number of drivers go past and he must be thinking to himself, why can't I get past this, Joey? He must be infuriating him at the moment. That's what happens when you're at the front, though. You get no, no slipstream. Les still hasn't cleared Snav. And he's not going to this time either into turn number nine. He has another look, but again, not close enough. And all Les is doing, he's almost compromising his line through turn nine by pulling to the inside, back to the out, to the inside. Joey Dunlop on the outside and Waze has cleared him this time around. Here comes Rally Matt on the inside. He's got through by the look of it. Looks Here like Stevie, Stevie, Q's, Q. and Stevie Q's just had enough and pushed him completely off the circuit. So, a bit of, bit of contact to say a little of it. And Four Fish now gets past Joey. I think fourth Joey's going to go up the inside again. Fortunately, he lagged, uh, not lag, Rob, he sort of phased took out a, there. Otherwise, took, that could have been a, a bit of a crash. penalty, yeah. Mm. That, would, that would not have ended well. And in what is a championship fight for four fish, not, he would not have been a happy man. At the front, though, Philo has managed to get onto the back of D. Whitehouse, who isn't setting bad lap times, has to be said. It's just that Philo, fastest mile on circuit last time out. Still not in the 103s. No, not yet. Snap defended again from Les. Another lap on the books. As they go on to lap, well, they come towards lap 11 now. Snap looking for that. At the front, though. Lambies. Sorry, Jack. At the front, we're side by side. Into turn one. Philo looking to the outside. Maybe looking for a switchback. He isn't quite going to work. And I believe Les is through. Yes, he is. Yeah, so he just break a little bit later and they just both lent on one another going through the corner. So, Les up to fourth. Wace is now in ninth, so I'm not certain what's happened to Wace. So we'll look, at, look at the map, it's just like one more massive long snake going around here at the moment. It is, with the head relatively detached from the rest of its body at the moment, because D. Whitehouse and Philo are fighting like crazy going into turn eight, and you can see D. Whitehouse just holding that tighter line and stopping from Philo doing the switch back. That was intentional. That was that's what you call good racecraft, Jordan. Just placing the car where you good need race it to be. Craft. Yeah, and that that certain technique is parking the bus, where you get get it early onto the apex and you don't come off the apex. You you take it even slightly slower. Although that would look a bit too easy for Philo around the outside of turn nine. I think D. Whitehouse will know what's going on now. He can see that Les has passed Snab. There's no point in fighting just yet. 
hold on for that second place, get back in the slipstream. We know how quick Philo is, but we know that Les is even faster on his meanwhile, on his day. Meanwhile, we now have a, a four-car train, five-car train even, for fourth place. It's now holding everyone up at the moment, and then Bruce Lee in fifth. He's got Rally Matt lagging a little bit behind him. This is hopefully not going to be too much of a problem for the... The rally drivers, one, so one, to speak. One thing I do know is that Snav does understand the team game in this championship, so it wouldn't surprise me if uh, if him and Bruce just have a little bit of a gap behind if Snav was just to let Bruce through because Bruce looking like he's got the better pace in the race, but it's whether the gap is now too large with just seven minutes remaining. Mm. I think that's the problem. You see the gap between, as you can see now, D. Whitehouse and Les are very close to one another. I think Les is going to look for a move at turn one. He does, but he's hit D. Whitehouse on his way through, and sure enough, he just backs out of it. Yeah. And lets him straight back through. Good good sportsmanship again. Oh, that was uh, interesting behind. Rally Matt now fourth. I'm going to go back and replay that because it looked like it was three wide. Snuff continuing to keep fourth. He's on the inside for Rally Matt. I don't think that lag is helping Matt at all. No, and I think he's getting lag bumped out of the way in places, which I think is not helping him, but not also helping the drivers. As Stevie Q was Stevie Q made right. contact. Let's just have a have a look back then at this turn number one. So Bruce has a little bit of a run. Snuff gives him the room. Rally Mac looks to go up the inside. Maybe a bit of contact with Bruce, maybe. And couldn't quite tell. Yeah, she couldn't. And yeah, definitely there was a, definitely a, a little bit of a lag bump, I think, there through turn four. But back with the live action, and Bruce's back pass, Ruddy Matt. And this Before, time, Les has got up the inside of D. Whitehouse. There he is. I mean, if you're four fish right now, you are watching that leaderboard and just seeing points dropping away. As Les gets back, gets through this field. He's going to have some work to do, though, to try and catch Philo, isn't he? He is. Um, but you have to say for Forfish, he's, he's struggling this season to almost break back through the field. On uh, on a couple of occasions this season, he's just he's just failed to, to really make an impact early enough to get him into those top-ranking positions. I think it's been quite difficult for Forfish in terms of the, the mid-pack fighting. You can see how intense it's been in the first 15 minutes of this race it's been absolutely non-stop and I think he's been shuffled out a few times, he was quite fortunate before that he didn't accidentally get punted off by uh, Joey Dunlop when he phased out so he counts lucky stars really that he's still in, in the fight because that could have went horribly wrong for him Exactly. Definitely don't yeah. discount his, his race craft though, because we know he's a good driver. Very, very good driver, but obviously, uh, it, 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 it could just be simply him getting back into into the GT Sport version of, of reverse grids. Because I remember on Project Cars, he he used to do well, and as I see say that Joey Dunlop and the uh, Traumatic Dave going side by side through as to close as you like. A little bit, of bit of between the three, six, and seven. Joey Dunlop going to fire it down the inside, doesn't he? Yes, he does. So you're just going to keep that place for now. Um, but yeah, I was just saying that the that transition back to GT Sport, maybe just the ha having to have that little bit of a learning curve again, because it's it's been a while since Fourfish really done a league race at next gen on GT Sport. Looks like they're going to go two wide, potentially even three wide as they come out of turn nine. Rally Matt looking for an opportunity as he lags towards the inside of the track is Bruce defending Fourfish going round the outside that looks like it could be a good move yeah again letting the car roll through with the momentum and he gets through into fifth Matt back to eighth I think again he had a little bit of a lag bump oh he had a nasty little side shunt a big dint in his rear left corner Wace has now rejoined him. He's probably going to be classified now as the angriest man on the grid at the minute. <laughs> Fourfish now looking to attack Snav. Snav, Snav I, you've got to say, he's been very impressive. And he gets a boost out of the corner. 
see just now just losing the rear end a little bit so he slides uh, obviously Forfus is looking to go around the outside just uh, nowhere to go for him and it's it just seven as a result yeah well the problem is with GT Sport Physics you tap the back of the person in front of you your car practically stops for a split second so you lose that momentum but he's coming right back at Stevie Q as we say that into turn one be careful, Stevie Q. They're leaning on one another as they go through turn one, but Fullfish gets the move. He was there, that's the thing. Fullfish was up the inside. I thought they were going to make contact earlier on in the straight, but fortunately they didn't. But you, you said it before, Jordan Snav, holding his own. Has to be, you know, still two minutes to go. Don't want to say anything, but. Yeah, so I think we've got two laps here. Definitely two. We're going to get uh, 19 laps, which I think we got last time, actually. I think, I, I think 21. It, it couldn't have been 21 because we weren't, we weren't doing sub one minutes. Well, we can edit that out somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Philo, very much controlling this race. He's not on our screen because the battle for fourth is just far too fascinating to walk away from. And, you know, as soon as we do oh, walk away from it, something's going to happen. Turn four. <laughs> turn nine I, was incredible. I'll tell you what, the exit of turn nine, that camera shot where it's just overhanging the, the ashtray yeah. looks quite good. But uh, Bruce under attack here from Fourfish. Remember, all this fighting behind Snav is helping Snav. Because the less he has to defend, the more he can just take his lines. Uh, Stevie Q looking to go back down the inside of Four Fish. And Wace has got Rally Mass in the background as well, coming out of turn four. He has, yes, he, yes, he has. But uh, Bruce Lee Harding almost acting like a rear gunner right now for uh, for Snav as they enter turn eight. I Good drive. The same, Jordan. Is he? I, I mean, I doubt there's going to be too much, you know, family biased towards one another because they will fight hard of course but I was thinking that you know both Nishan drivers you know, is Bruce quicker than, than Snav in this race because Snav's been right on the pace all the way through I I say Bruce probably yeah, he's quicker um, but obviously Snav is also looking the point is that they, they got the team element which obviously Snav does understand and if if Snav thinks he can break away from the pack by letting a teammate through and just following them, he will. Fourfish has actually got past Bruce. Ooh, that's a bit close to Fourfish, but uh, Bruce and CVQ having a good go. Oh, see, this is the final lap, so Snav only has a matter of about four corners now to defend from Fourfish. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's Snav does tend to be Four very fish. switched on in, in that sort of respect. We are going to briefly, though, Jordan, I'll let you take this one away because Philo coming towards turn nine. Yeah, so through, through turn nine for the for Philo, the new Shum driver. Fantastic drive through the field. And it's going to be the double for TNR Philo, who wins race two from Les in second. D. Whitehouse is third. Snav holding on to fourth, just about shutting the door on four fish. Yes, he does. Fourth for Snav, and everyone's coming across the line. Fifth for Four Fish, sixth for Bruce, seventh for Stevie Q, eighth for Rally Mats, ninth for Ways, tenth for Traumatic Dave, and eleventh for Joey Dunlop. Try saying that twenty times faster. Thirteen Ooh, seconds, what? Jack, covers the whole field. Wow! I mean, what a race! And 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 like you say, Jordan, thirteen seconds covering those. 11 drivers which is just incredible over the effectively 19 laps that we did gotta say though it tnr philo double race winner that's not happened this season that's a it's... really you know stamping his claim here to say that don't discount me just yet I might have missed a round but he's gonna fight for it the only th that's how the, the biggest thing to note there is next gen les took fastest lap on the pen on the penultimate lap of the race, lap 18 or 104.152, so uh, Rally Matt can take the honours away of being the fastest man on circuit all night. And his best result was only a fourth. <laughs> yes, a fourth and an eighth, which is incredible. Wace saying in the chat there that his pad died. If that's the case, then that's bad timing. Who oh, knows? Yeah. 
But, uh... A couple of notes as well saying about the lag, and I think that might have been indirectly caused from Matt, unfortunately. But I don't want to blame him because we know how difficult it can be to try and sort that sort of thing out. Especially on the night as well. Because mm. um, obviously Matt normally pretty decent on connection, so uh, just a bit of an off night for the internet. Um, but yeah, I mean, Fio from the back to the front of Sakuba, that's an achievement in itself. <laughs> Um, but Les, I think I'm going to have to give it to him. He's just put a massive dent into Four Fish's chances here. I mean, I know it's early on, but that's a lot of points now Four Fish will be behind. Mm, it's going to be quite a lot for him to make up, isn't it? And I think, you know, going into the round, the next race, which won't happen now, of course. Until nice Christmas. the new year. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so, an endurance, so double double points, is it? It will be. Double points. Bernie for... Eccleston has joined the mini Cooper Cup Challenge <laughs> committee. <laughs> and we're going to do double points. Is it, uh, just as a question, is it, is it double points just for race finish, race position, or also the bonus points get doubled as well? Because, see, normally there's three, three bonus yes. points on offer for the night. We'll double that and I think maybe do a point or two for laps led. Uh, well, that'll probably all get clarified in the next uh, the next few probably. days or so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I think driver of that race, I mean, you you can give it to Philo, but you almost want to give it to Snav a little bit as well. That drive on a pad, and I mean a pad as well, it's not sticks, it is button pressing and D padding. That's a, that's a hell of a way to hold your own. But, I mean, I guess you could say anyone, really. In that race, it was just chaotic. Ooh, Where well, are we for I mean, the endurance, Jack? you remember? Well, for, for round five, I believe the race circuit that we're going to be going to for the endurance race is going to be off the top of my head I want to say it's a race circuit hosted within GT Sport you can tell that I'm delaying my answer to your question there Jordan because you've managed to caught me, catch me off guard so nice one for that um, <laughs> but I can, no I'm only joking I can actually tell you that the race 5 will be at Dragon Trail Seaside ooh the chicane of death the chicane of well not in these cars well if you get it wrong it is yeah Oh, in any car around there, it's uh, <laughs> it's just chicane of death. I mean, that, that is that. I think that is dubbed from the GT Sport community. I think that is the dub's name for that chicane. It is it is forever known as a chicane of death. And technically speaking, it's not even a chicane. It's a double chicane. Yeah, I think they tend to refer to the second half. To be fair. Yeah. Um, but it's almost like the bus stop chicane of death. Mm. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, I mean, it's been a really good almost first half of the season in the minis um, I know that they're running a week behind but like we say come back in the new year join us for when we resume which I believe will be restarting on the I want to say the 3rd uh, of January yes yes 3rd of January 3rd of January which will be really interesting to see how the drivers get on once they've had a couple of sherries too many at Christmas time um, but you know it's that's it until 20 well I say 2021, I mean 2021, because that's the better way of saying it. And, I mean, Jordan, you got anything to say before we disappear? Um, well, obviously, if, if you've seen what you... If you like what you've seen tonight, obviously, go to the next-gen community page. Uh, we've got lots of leagues, as Jack will tell you. Lots mm. of leagues going on this season. I mean, obviously, tomorrow we've got the F1 league going on. Um... We've also, I think, I think next GT Sport is going. It is actually tomorrow is the Super Trofeo League. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff going on. So uh, obviously, if you have enjoyed what you've seen on in 2020 in general, to be fair, because uh, it's been a been a weird weird year, but obviously sim sim racing not affected. <laughs> no, in fact, it's improved. We had lots of racing across the board, didn't we? You know. Project Cars 2 had a nice little boost before it disappeared, Assetto Corsa before it transitioned to Assetto Corsa's Competizione, F1 2019 and 20, of course, and all the other PC leagues that were running with Race Room, of course, iRacing, so there's a lot to do, a lot to get involved in. 
Well, I think what I'll say, Jordan, for the the final time for us is a comedy. Uh, rather, I know you said a comedy duo. Then that'd have been brilliant. <laughs> pretty much are, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> for the commentary duo, it's good night from Jordan. Good night. And it's good night from me. And wherever you might be in the big wide world, have a good one. And Merry Christmas. <laughs>